In 1966, for the 67 model year, Chevrolet released its Camaro muscle car. Main competitors, of course, being the Ford Mustang and Dodge Challenger. And from day one, it was a pretty awesome car. Great looking, fun to drive, very iconic American muscle car. Fast forward several generations, many design changes and bigger and bigger engines and more, more and more power. And we land here, the 2022 Chevy Camaro 1SS. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. If you don't already know, my name is Andy and today we're going to take a full tour of this 2022 Chevrolet Camaro 1SS inside, outside, check out all the features and we're going to get this thing out on the road and see what it's like to drive. This thing is going to be fun. Before we begin, special thanks to West Chevrolet of Alcoa, Tennessee for providing the vehicle for today's review. After the video, make sure to check them out at the link in the description below. Now I'll start by saying this. Once again, this is the 1SS version of the current Chevrolet Camaro. Now you can get these things available ranging anywhere from your base model with a 2.0 liter four cylinder with an automatic or a manual, all the way up to the crazy fully specced ZL1 1LE with the extreme track, tons of horsepower, extreme amounts of power, track focused monster car. We're gonna to talk today specifically about the 1SS version of this car. Now let's start like we always do, looking at the exterior styling of the car. And first off, right here in the front, looking at the Camaro's very aggressive front fascia. Zooming in here, we got some nice LED headlights, nice thin grille running all the way across. I'm surprised that this is a solid Chevy logo and not a flow tie, kind of hollow logo, but I'd say the more powerful ones probably get that. You do have the SS in red right there in the grille. Down from that, you get even more grill, get a lot of air into that radiator. Over here to the side, you got your LED running lamps. This is a really, really good looking front end for this car. Up on the hood, functional heat extractor vent. If you look in there, you can actually see the stuff under the hood. Functional heat extractor vent on top of the hood here. Now coming down the side, you're gonna see this car is actually specced with the red line package. So what you get in the red line here is these black wheels with the red line stripes on them. Get some red calipers behind those. Those look really, really cool. Here's your black Camaro badge outlined in red. Right here is a red stripe on the mirror cap. As you can see here, red line, you can barely see it, but it's there. Stepping back, I love, love, love this gray color with all the black accents against it. No chrome, black against that gray. It look, looks really, really good. Coming around the back, you've got this nice wing here, also in black, nice contrast against the gray. Right here above the driver's side taillight, you have red line stripes again. And I love the taillights on these Camaros because they're these clear housings. They're always clear until you turn the LED Tail lights on and then they light up red which is a really really cool look i've always loved this look that's why i went with that look on my dodge dakota coming down from that you got another ss badge in red below that you've got dual exhaust tips so that wonderful v8 engine can make glorious noises we'll hear those noises here in a little bit coming over to the passenger side looking at the wheels again these are wrapped in 20 inch goodyear eagle tires right here you see the gas cap is this black piece with the red accents with a camaro stamped into it just push on that, it'll open right up. It also has a capless fuel system. Up top, you do have a sunroof, which is kind of nice to have if you're into that. And stepping back, just looking at this car overall, this is a good looking, aggressive, sporty looking car. This thing looks mean, it sounds mean, this thing is mean. Before we get in, look at the key. It is a typical Chevy key, nothing really special. Lock, unlock, remote start, trunk release, panic, and a Chevy logo on the back. Unfortunately, not a Camaro logo. I think that would have been a nice touch. Anyway, let's jump on into the interior of this car. And I love, love, love the way this one is specced. It's the black interior with the red accents all over it. Basic black here, you got some soft touch with some white stitching, a little bit of piano black accenting, and then these red parts right here below the window controls. Love that way that looks against the black. You do have a button here to release your trunk lid. Stepping closer to the interior, here's your door sill with, with the big Camaro stamped into it. Kind of basic black. I wish they'd have done something cooler with that, but that's what you get. Here are your bucket seats. They're not incredibly cool looking. They are decently bolstered. They have some nice gray accents and they're not too bad to sit in either. Coming across the dash, I love these big circular air vents you get. Here's your Camaro steering wheel. 
nothing extremely fancy you do have the red ss in the bottom and it is flat bottom because sports car you got to be able to get into this thing i do love the hood over the gauge cluster it's a kind of cool looking deal it's kind of aggressive looking i do like the way that it, that looks coming across here you have a decent sized infotainment screen down here are your climate controls and these are kind of interesting i'll touch on those in a minute back from there here's the gear selector for your optional 10 speed automatic you can also option these with a six speed manual this example does have the automatic Back there, of course, your traction control off, your drive mode switch, parking brake controller. You got a 12 volt round port right here. So far, not seeing any USBs in this car. If we raise this lid up, you get a little bit of console storage behind your cup holders. And it looks like you get a couple of USB-A ports as well as a three and a half millimeter auxiliary input. No USB-C so far in a 2022. That's very interesting. I'll let you see behind the infotainment screen. You can probably somewhat see there's a little bit of ambient lighting behind that. It's a neat little touch, probably probably really cool to look at when you're driving at night basic passenger side dash nothing, nothing special there you do have a glove box over here it is lockable and it is decently sized it's not huge but it's not tiny it's eh, it's about what everybody needs coming up above here's your rear view mirror now this one is not the digital rear view mirror like general motors is putting in a lot of their vehicles this is just a typical rear view mirror you see here if i hit the switch it just goes into night mode instead of turning on a camera view kind of wish that was a camera right here in front of your dome light here's your controller for your sunroof of course your OnStar SOS, all that good stuff right here. Not a whole lot up here, just kind of the stuff you need. Above my head, you can see here is the sunroof. Typical thing on most cars. Going back to the center console to show you a few more of the cool accents in this car. Now you do have these red accents on either side of your center console. I do, once again, love the way that looks against the black. You can see right here, your seat belts are also in red. If we pull this front seat forward, you got some back seats, but uh, yeah, those are for your kids or to carry things in. You might be get people back here if the driver or passenger are short, but definitely probably not a great place if you're an adult. But they did give the rear the same treatment as the front. You do have the same color scheme on the seats. Little bit of bolstering here on the seat bottoms and you get the red seat belts. Here in front of the rear seat, you do get some sort of a little storage tray area. It's got a little rubber pad down in. One thing I really do like about this back seat, it's got this loop here in the middle. If we pull it, you get a trunk pass through and hey, there's my gear in the trunk. I started this thing up now. Chevy is one of those companies that likes to put these square start stop buttons in their cars, especially here in the Camaro. We'll go ahead and hit that, start this thing up, and it will come to life. And we'll focus here in front of the steering wheel area. Now, as we move in, you'll see this thing does have paddle shifters on it. This is the 10 speed automatic, so you can shift this thing manually. We'll try to get a look at how well that does. Zooming in here on the gauge cluster, you see you get your pretty standard complement of gauges. Your speedometer on the right goes up to 200 miles an hour tack on the left with your 6500 rpm red line and then up here along the top are all your auxiliary gauges your oil pressure coolant temp gas gauge and battery voltage and these are all digital on this big center screen now focusing on this big center screen if we look down here in the corner this little indicator is where it's going to show your driving mode so if i hit my drive mode switch you can see it's going to pop up big and you can switch between tour sport track or snow and ice in a, in this sports car and as you can see whenever you change it it changes the little icon down in the corner now we'll go through the center gauge screen using the controls on the right side of the steering wheel. So here's your big digital speedometer and your odometer reading 1700 miles on this 2022 used vehicle, but pretty much brand new. Scrolling down, you get your trip A, here's your trip B, right, here's your fuel range. We're gonna say that's not gonna be great because no one's gonna drive this thing slow. Oil life meter, here's your tire pressure monitors, a little bit of timer and back to the top. If we go over here to the side, we can go down to performance. And now it's going to give you a bunch of performance figures your oil temperature your oil pressure battery voltage trans fluid temp tire temperature of course it doesn't read in degrees it just says normal uh, and back to oil temperature back over to the side menu here's your audio here's your nav if you click on your nav you do not get a map you just get turn by turn directions that look just like this phone and your options menu and the first thing it pulls up in your options menu is launch control however i don't think this car is equipped it just says disabled how unfortunate and of course you can change all the various settings in here as well so not exactly a highly configurable center screen but it is there and it does provide you with a lot of great information here in the center here's your infotainment screen it's not insanely huge but it's decent if we throw it into reverse here you get a pretty good backup camera. It's actually not terrible. Graphics are okay. And your trajectory lines turn with the steering wheel. That's also always very nice. Now here pretty much we're on our home screen. It's going to show you what music's playing. It's going to show you if you've got any phones connected. Up here you can press and hold to set your, your radio presets. 
swipe over here's all your little icons great to see it comes with apple carplay and android auto available wi-fi hotspot also has built-in spotify amazon alexa one feature that i'm unfortunately not seeing here that i i've seen on plenty of 2022 model chevrolets is google a lot of your 2022 general motors vehicles actually have google baked into them so you get assistant you get google maps that kind of thing you're not going to get that here in the 2022 camaro unfortunately down below that here is your climate controls now this car only has a single zone climate control but i do like you have a lot of physical buttons up here your big power button in the middle here's your positioning here's your defrosters all the way over here to your recirculation little bitty display here to, for your temper as well as one over here for your fan speed but if you're not familiar with the camaro you're going to be wondering how in the world do you adjust these things well, right here, your left side climate, your driver's side climate vent is also your temperature control. As you can see, I turn it to the right, it turns it up. And it also gives you an auxiliary display up here in the center screen, show you what's going on. And this one on the right is for your fan speed. You can see when I turn it up, fan speed goes up, turn it back, fan speed goes down. And again, in the auxiliary display on the screen, you get that readout very cool integration i loved it when chevy started doing this and i love that they're still doing it i hope they continue to do it integrating your control knobs into your center vents that is just really really cool now to get into the trunk you can either press that button on the driver door double click the button on the key fob or with the fob on you you can reach up underneath the bumper hit this button here and pull the trunk lid right up once the trunk lid is open you can see it's not exactly an extremely large opening if i pick up my swiss gear backpack here you can see just how much of that opening it fills as it goes into the trunk if I lay this thing down, you're going to see just how much of that trunk it takes up. Now, it's a decently sized trunk. You can get a decent amount of stuff in here. You can probably get luggage for two, maybe three people. You can go grocery shopping, not a problem, but it's not insanely huge. Of course, it's also not the tiniest thing in the world. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for, let's get under the hood and look at the engine. Here you can see the 6.2 liter V8 producing 455 horsepower, 455 pound-feet of torque. Like I said before, this thing can be made to you either a six-speed manual or your 10-speed automatic, as this one here is. Zero to 60 time for this car, depending on the trim level that you buy with this motor, four to 4.3 seconds, zero to 60. So pretty big power out of this car, very fast. I'm not going to talk about fuel economy because that's not what this thing's about. But who needs fuel economy when near engine sounds like this? And while we're back here, let's not forget that uh, one annoying thing that Chevy's been doing for a long time that apparently they still insist upon doing, and that's when you open the doors or turn the car on and off, that stinking reverse light comes on, making people think you're backing out of a spot where you're not even there. Please, dear God, stop this. All right, taking the Camaro out driving, we're gonna start out in tour mode and see what that's like. And even that's pretty fast and sounds great. Before I really get into it, we'll talk about just generally driving the car visibility of course it's you get the visibility of a sports car with the low roof you can see pretty well out the front really cool view out over the hood there you get some de decently sized side mirrors you can see those big rear haunches and behind you it looks really neat rear window visibility is eh, it's a small steeply raked window yeah but you don't buy this thing for visibility you buy this thing for fun seats are somewhat bolstered but they're all pretty comfortable they're not like insane Recaro sport buckets or anything like that, but they do just fine for the purposes of this car. Now, if you're gonna step up to the insane, you know, ZL1 1LE track package, then yeah, you can probably get some cooler seats and less comfortable seats at that. But this is pretty much all you need in this car, unless you just wanna put in some of your own. I'm gonna drop it into track mode, one, two clicks, and let's see how this thing handles. Coming around this 90 here. Oh, she's great. Let's do another one of those. Obviously, it's not gonna handle like the best of the best or even like the C8 Corvette, but for a Camaro, it does pretty well. I do wanna be careful though, because with the kind of power this thing's put out, 455 horsepower, it's not the most, but you still get them rear wheels loose and get into some trouble so you know be careful with that all right since we're in track mode we'll bump it over to manual i want to test out how responsive these paddles are so if we give it some gas then 
it's pretty quick. It's not the most responsive paddles out there, but it's not too bad. I've definitely used paddle shifters with more lag than this. Unfortunately, uh, like with all my cars I borrow from West Chevrolet, I'm only able to keep it in this little industrial park, which is just fine. I try to do my best to deliver the best review I can in this situation. Uh, thankfully, uh, my boy Richard here hooked up with me so he can be my cameraman. Makes things like this a lot easier. Now we're gonna keep it in track mode and just see exactly how well this thing does. Chevy claims zero to 60 of four to 4.3 seconds. Um, unfortunately, there's no launch control enabled in this car. So we're just gonna hit the gas from zero and... Okay, so like I said, 455 horsepower. It's not the most power in the world, but it is a lot of power. And if you're just going along and you wanna go a little faster, it does take it a second for it to downshift that 10 speed automatic before it really delivers the power. So that's something you really gotta get used to. It feels like it's gotta go down about two gears before it gives you that power. All right, we're gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna roll on it just a little bit easier. That's better. Now that wasn't near as hard as the last one, but I definitely believe that four to 4.3, zero to 60 time. Man, this thing, this thing is quick and it sounds amazing. It really sounds awesome. Nothing like a big American V8 just roaring out the rear end of the car. That is truly awesome. All right, y'all, so there you have it. A quick yet thorough tour of the 2022 Chevy Camaro 1SS. Now, I understand this car has been out a while, but still, this thing is super cool. And I'm super glad I got a chance to check this thing out. This thing is fast. Of course, you can get it even faster if you want to spend the money but this thing is extremely quick. Now, if you are thinking about picking up one of these things brand new, you're gonna be looking at a starting MSRP for your 1SS with an automatic of around $43,000, just a little bit under, but still not insanely terrible money for the performance you get out of this car. This thing is fun, it is a blast. It's pretty comfortable. It's got okay tech in it. Um, a lot of modern Chevys actually have a lot better tech, but this thing has what you need for a fun sports car. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, make sure to go back to the channel and check out the rest of the videos. I've got a lot of other cool reviews on the channel. If you like what you see there, consider subscribing. Follow on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel. Another great way to get notified when a video goes up. And of course, I'm always looking for vehicles to film and drive on the channel for reviews. If you got anything cool, new, weird, odd, rare, whatever you think would make a cool video, hit me up at my email address in the description below. Once again, special thanks to West Chevrolet of Alcoa, Tennessee for providing this vehicle for this review today. Once you get done here, make sure to check them out at the link in the description below. Anyways, thanks you all so much for watching and y'all have a good one.